<laughs> I'm normal on there. Uh, yeah, uh, I met David when we were at UCT in Cape Town. Um, and I think of myself as a black womanist um, who is also queer. We are in Bali. <laughs> it has been fabulous. And it's just been the most amazing, amazing trip. But it's also been a trip that's sort of helped me think about a few things. Um, things like race and gender when a person is on the road and in new spaces. Um, and how class and race and gender intersect um, in spaces that are not home. Sexual currency is a term I've come across um, within the fat activist space. Um, and it is a way women I have found, fat women particularly, um, speak about how the world perceives your attractiveness. So instead of speaking about things like, oh, that, that person is out of your league, which I just don't accept, we speak about um, how you are perceived as being attractive. So almost your levels of attractiveness. And that is, that is then turned into the currency you can use in the world. So uh, what spaces you can then move in and where you're going to be accepted. It also for me, and this is a more, I'm, I'm speaking about this from a heterosexual kind of framework because that's a framework I'm most familiar with. Um, when we speak about sexual currency, we speak about the fact that often for heterosexual male people, your partner is about your status. So when you're with a female partner, she's not just your partner. She's also how people think of where you are in the world. Have you arrived? And that's why we have situations often where um, amongst black communities, um, black men will go after thin white women because they have a higher sexual currency than black or other women of color. Um, and that's where the idea of sexual currency kind of emerges. One of the things that I think about when I think about sexual currency and um, maybe even racial currency, if mm -hmm. you will, is how nuanced my relationship to white privilege is. Mm. And so I think about um, how, as someone who's read Western, um, I, I pass differently than newcomers, new Chinese or Asian uh, newcomers in Vancouver, um, who may not have the language, um, who dress differently. Um, and I think that that gives me access to different amounts of white privilege, even though, even though I'm not actually white. Um, and I think that those nuances are really important to engage with. My language, my Western white language that I have, um, my white accent, <laughs> um, my Western uh, you know, presentation, that's linked to race too. Mm. And so I think that it's really important that when we talk about um, white privilege that we also talk about those type of nuances mm. and acknowledge that, hey, as POC, sometimes we access those spaces of white privilege and we, yeah, based on how we, how we look like. Yes. So, you know, when I think about my personal sexual currency, it's always influenced by the fact that um, my whole life I was ugly, you know? Um, I was told I was ugly, I was seen as ugly. Um, I'm the dark skinned, really fat black girl. Mm -hmm. And in the world we occupy, in the world we live in today, that means I don't have a great deal of sexual currency. So people will look at you and if you're with someone good looking or attractive, the question is always like, like how does that work? <laughs> what did you do? Are you tricking him? Like, why is he with you? And it's been interesting kind of um, traveling through Bali with David <laughs> and having people interpret us as a couple, seeing the confusion because firstly, I think mainly because of the race thing and then the looks thing, short flat black girl with like this gorgeous you know, Chinese boy. So, and the kind of, some of the aggression we've encountered as a result, um, the sort of, you're a freak kind of reaction, some that we've come across as well. Um, but also, just thinking about it and reflecting on how it's made me feel, and almost coming to the realization that sexual currency is something you don't choose, you're assigned it. But it is something I think it is very strong to emphasize that you can reject. You don't have to accept the way people see you or view you. You don't have to accept the way people think about how you are attractive or beautiful. That is something you choose. And the only way you, I think you actually survive this world is by deciding what your own sexual currency is going to be.